Ask someone whom you would consider to be the least trustworthy person in America by occupation. Politicians would have to be right at the top of the list, especially considering the current climate and some of the dreck that's fouling the airwaves. A number of polls over the years have pointed to car salespeople as the least tr uh, trusted, but, but they can be forgiven, seeing as they're just shoveling what they've been handed. Now, however, maybe we should usher a new winner in this ignominious category, automobile manufacturers. For it would seem they are not only lying about their vaunted safety of the consumer that they keep harping about, but also about how they treat the environment and how those little numbers about gas mileage could be the fuzziest math around. Let us remove the air filter from this carburetor of corporate cover-up and let the truth breathe. Pedal to the metal with the nationally syndicated automotive expert, the car coach Lauren Fix, tonight from a trailer in Austin, Texas. Because you were out racing today, right? Yeah, we are racing. I'm running a Jaguar and my husband's racing a Corvette in the Trans Am series. Okay, we just wanted to point that out now because everybody's going to be going, my God, she's in a warehouse someplace. I don't know. She's racing. <laughs> We've told you that. It's what she's doing. Let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. Volkswagen has now confessed this just gets worse every time we see something new. They overstated their claims about CO2 emissions and thus the fuel efficiency on 800,000 cars. They're calling this an irregularity. Lauren, come on, let's just cut right through the bovine excrement here and talk about what this is. This is a lie, flat out and simple. Well, everybody's been to the Kia, had gone through it, Hyundai has gone through it, every single manufacturer Ford, GM, Chrysler. The problem is the EPA makes different regulations. So to, to be truthfully, how many times have you ever bought a car where the number on the window sticker actually matched the real fuel economy numbers? The fact is, slim to none. In many cases, I've gotten substantially less, and in some cases, such as I actually own a diesel vehicle, it was more. And going to this diesel thing, and I know you want to talk about diesel and VW, but one of the things that's important is they're going after these vehicles that they admitted they were using a cheat device because they overpromised and underdelivered. So I'll give them, they get slapped for that. The, the fuel economy numbers, is starting. then they're going after diesel vehicles that run on blue. Here's what I'm telling you right now. This is starting to look very political. They're only going after one manufacturer. And maybe it's because the plant in Chattanooga doesn't want to go UAW. Okay, so wait a minute. Mm. Let's, let's stop right there. Is it then your contention, as I've heard from many others, that quite frankly, when it comes down to those numbers on the cars, when you see the, the mileage, it's never right. It's always a never. guess at best. Right. That's true. They're never right. It's all how you drive, and every condition is different. It's where you go, how long you drive, you let the car idle, you go through drive throughs So they're never going to be accurate because we all drive completely differently. 60 seconds quick. I want you to hear something. Here's House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, very happy at the passing of a highway bill this week, but says it doesn't go far enough. Here she is. The highway bill is a good bill, except it's, it's a modest, I would say, rather than a robust rollout. It's a modest step forward. Uh, we really do have to work uh, to do more because our infrastructure needs are great. Give me a quick 30 seconds here. Will it make much difference? Uh, honestly, no, because what they do is they increase the taxes to us and then they go ahead and use it in the general fund because it's not going to where it's supposed to be because all those monies that we've been collecting on toll roads and everything else is not going to bridge, bridges and roads like they should be. We only got a minute left. I wanted to make sure we got this in. The passing mm -hmm. of a legend today at 89 yes. years of age, George Barris, has left us. My God, Lauren, Very for those sad. of us who are car enthusiasts, from the Munster car to so much more, what a genius. Batmobile, too, and, and the Monkees car, and Beverly Hillbillies. I mean, I've met George Barris many times, and it's a very sad passing. He was a true genius and a true artist. Is it fair to say, well, wait a minute, that's the point. He was an artist. As we're looking at some of these pictures here, he took cars and turned them into something. Isn't it fair to say that a lot of what he did, just as fantasy, automobile manufacturers are still using to this day? Absolutely. His talents and his technology. Actually, his grandson is actually running the business now. Uh, and, it, and they're still trying to produce that same thing. You're an artist. That craft, that mind is really hard to replicate, even in his grandson. But, you know, he will always be in our hearts and in our memories. And his cars will still always be amazing. And I'm a huge Batman fan. Uh, we're all Batman fans. We're all fans of this. I mean, every time we see one of these cars now. But George Barris, I still remember having the model cars that I put together with cement of the Batmobile and the Munsters car as well. A tragic loss, but boy, we still remember all the great things he did. Keep racing well, young lady. Don't forget laurenfix.com. Go there to find out what Lauren's up to. Lauren, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next week. Stay safe. We're not yet done when it comes to your money and those seeking to bathe in it. How about the insignificant wasting of some 11 billion of your dollars? We'll tell you about it next, right here on the Fastest 60 Minutes in News, the Hardline.